Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Silence's Turrets, a mod that adds in an unbelievable amount of turrets and their options. And I'm here to kind of walk you through the gist of it. Uh, there's so much in this mod that um, I'm not actually going to be covering everything for once, but I will cover a good portion of things. But anyway, I currently have it set up so that I can spawn in mobs to attack this villager, uh, or at least start moving in in this area, into this little fort area that I currently have. As you can see, it's a little bit of a run up to this fella, but it's not too bad. If I bring up the Silence's Turrets mod, you can see that there's, well, less than a page of uh, different items that you can potentially use, some of which are only for creative use, so keep that in mind. But a good portion of this is actually accessible by you, maybe not at the beginning of the mod, but at least as you play through it. Now when you first start playing with this mod, there are a few turrets that you have access to that you can craft pretty much out the gate, uh, provided that you have some basic materials in Minecraft. That's going to be a cannon, which is made with just some logs and some iron, and most of these are going to be using some kind of drive core, which is basically another crafted item. It's mostly just usable as a crafting ingredient, but it's made with a bunch more iron, a piston, and a redstone repeater, so you will have to have access to some redstone as well as iron. There's also the arrow turret, which isn't too far off. The dart launcher, which is probably one of your cheapest options. And then maybe once you've had a little bit more access out there, there's a hell razor, which does require a few materials like a brewing stand and an eye of ender, plus one of those driving cores. But each one is going to have its different benefits and drawbacks. For starters, let's put down a couple of these arrow turrets. They're pretty neat, they're pretty basic, and they work really well. So if I press this button here, it brings in a few zombies and you can see it just kind of makes short work of them with the arrows. Not all of them get through because it's only able to keep maybe one zombie at bay at a time, but you get the idea. It's, it's not too bad, but the one that did get up here did start getting in and attacking the other turret. Now something you need to be aware of with these turrets is placement. Uh, if I put a husk over here, I'm using these because they don't burn during the daylight, then this turret will shoot into this turret, potentially causing some damage and destroying it. So for example, if I put a husk here, they'll both shoot, but you'll start noticing that this turret, as I said, is shooting the back end of this other turret, thus causing even more damage than it needs to be, uh, well, taking. And it's doing a, sh a shake and a shimmy, which means that it is at very low health. If you look, it only has a uh, heart and a half left on the left there. Whereas this one's sitting pretty with a lot of hearts, and uh, they both do have a little bit of armor, so that's kind of nice. And as you level these things up, because if you notice, there's an arrow turret level 1 and an arrow turret level 2, uh, which just requires an upgrade to the drive core. I'll show you how to do those shortly. But it basically gives you a benefit on the amount of health and or armor that it might have. So that one arrow turret that was destroyed I have here, it is currently one durability. So if it's there, you can just break it with your hand or some kind of tool if you want. If it's very low on health, like this one here has a heart and a half, you can also break it uh, just by, you know, just holding left click, picking it up. And you can see that it currently has durability of 5 of 17. That's more or less its health rating. But when it drops down to 1 health, it just breaks and sits there. Sometimes some of the mobs will still uh, kind of dance around it, but they, they're pretty much going to move on to other turrets at that point. Now, of course, this one here, it's at full health, but you can still break it as well in the same manner. But instead, I'm going to show you how to access the different ways that you can kind of find out about this. So there's two parts to most turrets, and that's going to be the top and the bottom. Now the bottom, you can see that there's like this little black line here, that's that's the bounding box. And the top is more or less going to be, I, I hit uh, F3 and B, the, the hitbox uh, thing here. You want to kind of find where that is, that just kind of click up top of the turret, and you'll get this little menu up here. If you click at the bottom, you'll just see it's a ter arrow turret level one. And, and no, the, the spelling in this mod isn't the best because the person who made this mod is not a primarily English speaker, but they did a really nice job on making a really fun mod. So moving back up here, you've got several different slots, a little gear or a little wrench uh, icon and lots of little icons here. It's a bit confusing because there's nothing really telling you what any of this stuff does. 
That's what I'm here for. So any turrets that you put down are going to be part of your turret history network in a way. Basically your player data, uh, so much to say. Uh, but if you want to keep track of this so that you can upgrade stuff, you're going to want to make one of these, a chip, which is going to be a redstone comparator, iron, and a little bit of redstone dust. Then you can put it in this little slot that looks just like it, pow, and now it becomes part of your network. Any kills that this turret or other turrets that have chips in it gets ends up adding to your network total, and it will start recording those wins. These are going to be used later on to upgrade turrets, and it's very important that you actually start making these and installing them in any of these that you possibly can. Now, these slots on the right here are going to more or less be the upgrade slots, and you'll notice that there's this long line of things here and a short line here. Well, the long line of items is your upgrades that can fit in the top, the short list is the upgrades that can fit in the bottom. It's that simple. If you don't want to see those, you can click this little wrench icon and it goes away. That That's all it is. It's, it's not too complex. Don't overthink it. Now, if you want to know what all these things are, that's more or less going to be on you, but a lot of them will have little tool tips that tell you what it is, like this. Uh, you can see there's two little red items here. These here, there's a power chip level one, power chip level two. One increases the damage of the of the turret by 25%, the other by 40, and so on. And you can keep going. They've got different ways of uh, increasing the speed, repelling attackers, uh, even repairing the, uh, the the turret itself as it starts like attacking uh, in kind of like a vampiric way, where you get health back on damage that it does. Now each turret has different upgrades, and that is more determined by the kind of projectiles that it may use. Uh, so in this case, it's using arrows, and therefore it'll be appropriate for it to have this little bouncy ball one here. Or you can shoot explosives on it, which, don't worry, the explosives that it shoots are non-harming to any kind of environmental feature. It's more or less just like this little area knockback um, explosion. It's, it's pretty neat. Uh, Molotov cocktails, it, it just sets targets on fire. Um, and any items that are near it laying on the ground. So that is kind of like a, a self-destroying and cleaning up one in a way. But then you've got other things that are just like, you know, damage, speed increase. So if you get some of these upgrades, you can actually increase the damage here by 25% uh, with this power chip and 25% with this advanced part, thus increasing the damage that this weapon does by 50% overall. Now, if you've got one of these already hooked up and you want to move it around, that's where a glove is going to come in handy. That way you don't have to kind of take uh, all the upgrades out or anything like that. If I were to break this and it's not broken, uh, basically uh, something you should be aware of is if your turret is destroyed, like uh, enemies attack it and bring it down to one durability and the top of the turret disappears, that means that any uh, upgrades that are inside of it are destroyed as well. So you don't want your turrets to be blown up if possible. Uh, but if you don't want to lose any of these things and you just want to move this thing around, you're going to want to make a glove. A glove is made with just a little bit of leather, a chest, and an iron ingot. And you can hold a few of these with your glove. Let me put this down here and you just right click on the top and it picks up the, uh, the turret. And it has one turret in there as it is. Now if you want to put it back down, you just right click. And it, I believe it'll hold up to three turrets, uh, and you'll place them in the reverse order that you pick them up. All right, friend, we're in here to try and figure out how we can do a little bit more with the turrets that we have. I've only shown you one turret, but I want to show you the basics on how to maintain, take care of, and upgrade your turrets as it is. Then we can continue on with the different types of turrets, showing you all the different abilities and powers that they may have. So in this case, you're going to want a brewing stand. It's actually going to be important. And that is because of this variety store. The variety store is just made with paper and some wood, more or less. And you place it down, then you just right click on it. It is its own store. You don't need villagers for any of these things. The villager I have here is just a lure for any of the monsters that are out there. Uh, in case they decide that they, they don't want to attack the turrets, I just wanted to have something that was appropriate. But anyway, in this menu, you can see a lot of interesting stuff. What the heck is going on here? This is a store. Basically, this is what you're using to purchase things. The things that you are buying or the, the currency is going to be at the bottom. And then the items that you're going to want to uh, be rewarded with your purchase are listed at the top. And once you buy so many of them, everything will change in these. Now, if you have multiple variety stores, you can plonk a whole bunch of them down as soon as one of them changes, 
they will all change and they all have the same exact display so that won't make a difference and if you break it and put it down again you'll have the same stuff in here so if you don't like the trades for the emerald stuff maybe spend a little bit on some of the gold uh, like in this case I, I don't really want to spend 51 uh, hellwort sauce on this uh, soul thing here I, th I think um, maybe I could get a cheaper price it is possible you could do that uh, and that is one way to get some of these upgrades because the upgrades don't have crafting recipes this is one of the ways that you can get it is by uh, randomly getting them but you do get to see a sample of which ones you might get now keep in mind here that there is at least a couple of some of these ones like this green one here could be a tactical chip level one could be a tactical chip level two you don't know same thing with this this is a quick loading level one or level two but on the other side that cruel soul does a damage plus 100 but some of these are only usable in certain turrets so you might not even want this because your turret won't even use that char for example these arrow turrets don't use that so in this case let's put in three gold and i'm going to purchase myself one of these uh, here and if I click here it then just pops out the top might have to get a little bit closer and grab it and then I now have an upgrade that I can put into my turret again just right click somewhere around the top and you can put that upgrade in here uh, let's say damage is great but if I can't put if I if I can't hit the enemy and they're hitting me first then maybe I do want the attack speed because the arrows do have a bit of a knockback and it can be quite nice because now it's going to shoot faster and it's going to do more damage because of the upgrades that that currently has. So as you can see, that zombie didn't even get closer and in fact was making reverse progress. So the speed upgrade definitely helps, but in a mob, it probably won't be enough. Something I neglected to mention is that if you want to rotate the different options in here instead of purchasing one of them, you can just spend some emeralds. It will take one emerald to rotate through the different stuff so that you can probably see something that might be a little bit more to your liking. Next up, I'm going to tell you about the trading post. This is just made with a bunch of wood and a chest. Looks kind of cute, does not require any villagers, same with any of these things. And when you right click on it, it has a very curious interface once again. So this is kind of a, a shop recycler and reward giver, but it's a lot more like a, a gotcha or um, one of those little uh, insert a quarter and get some weird random prize out uh, type <laughs> items. But it, it might be really good in this case. Let's say I don't want this power chip. Uh, I ended up getting several of these and I'm ready to recycle them. You can actually put a lot of the different upgrades that you may have gotten in here. And then you press this button on the side and it'll convert it into a currency. You can then use that currency to try and purchase a different item, but you might not have enough. In this case, let's put a bunch of diamonds in there. If I click this once, it converted one diamond into four coins. Maybe that's enough. There we go. I just got an item. What did I get? A biological jamming device absolutely fantastic and something we're not going to cover just yet it will be uh, covered eventually but you can see that you can get all sorts of different items in here just keep pressing the button here and i'm converting a bunch of diamonds into coins then i can press the button and all manner of different uh, uh, drops can just pop out of this thing now i was using diamonds you can use other things like you know gold and so on but uh more or less it's just going to be like i, I believe it's just gold diamonds and uh, any random upgrades that you might have Next, we're covering the maintenance station. This is a blast furnace that's been reinforced with stone bricks, and this is going to allow you to repair your old machinery. Uh, very important indeed. So if you have some stuff that you need to get fixed and you don't have a way of doing it while it's out in place, you can uh, pick that item up and then bring it in here and uh, just kind of place it down in, in this. So currently it has a fuel slot. Then it's got three different types of ingot slots. Each one will only accept this one type of ingot. So you're, you're not going to be able to put other, like, all iron in here or something like that. And depending upon what you insert in here, it will repair different items differently. So in this case, it will it's going to require a little bit here. It took a little bit of the iron, and it's re slowly repairing that with the coal. There we go. It's using a little bit more. Fully repaired. It's done. Now I can take this arrow turret. Put this broken one in here and it's going to start taking some more of the iron in this case there we go it just took an ingot to repair some of its health and we're done only took two ingots and it repaired it completely a lot cheaper than well probably getting an, an entirely new unit with a new drive core 
Okay, and this next one is probably one of the most important ones for upgrading. Okay, it is the most important one for upgrading your machinery. And it's going to be for making all the, the uh, drive core upgrades as well as, um, well, just, yeah, that's pretty much how you upgrade things. But it is just a crafting table, some iron ingots, and a little bit of stone bricks. It's got a really cute look, doesn't require any villagers. You right click on it and it's got, once again, a bit of a confusing interface. But you can see it's got a slot for a chip. So if you take a chip that you've made and put it in here, you can see that my turrets over time have defeated 98 enemies. They, they've been very good about what they do. Then you're going to need to figure out what kind of stuff you want to put in here to upgrade. So to find out, just click the little recipe book here. And it will tell you in order to get uh, a regular drive core upgraded to a, a yellow dot one, which is going to be a level two, then you're going to need eight iron and two diamonds. So let me grab one of these. We're going to put in some iron. We're going to put in some diamonds and pow. Instantly, I get a driving core level two. Take that out and let's take a look. If I have a driving core level two, I can then upgrade that to a level three with double the price. So let's put that in here. Oh, there we go. Level three. And then when I look at this, it allows me to increase further to make it. A, a, it you get the idea. It, it's, it makes a level four drive core. And then you can use those to make even more advanced different types of, of crazy cool stuff um, just by upgrading stuff. But you do have to have some kills in order to do so. You notice now by doing that, I have reduced uh, several numbers on uh, the network chip that I have that I was I had installed in some of these units so make sure to put those in as many of these as possible and you're probably going to want to leave one chip in here at all times just to make it easier on yourself now yes there are different types you can see that there's these ones here which are the regular driving cores there's the acid cores which are kind of green and of course there's the hell cores which they're, they're kind of well hell styled uh, more like potion-y type effects. And then this last page, if you click the arrow, is a little confusing but extremely helpful because it shows you the recipe on how you can start making this ingredient here. By opening up a brewing stand, you can see here I've got uh, the blaze powder already in. You can start off with some hell wart jars. These require a nether wart and a glass jar. Glass jar is just a bunch of glass. So yeah, all the recipes in this mod are actually pretty easy provided that you can understand how to actually make them. <laughs> but then you take that recipe that we just saw in the previous thing, it will take a little bit of time, and it will make some Hellwort sauce, which then you grab these, and you can use them to buy stuff in this page, uh, if you can find a cheap enough price. Because most of the Hell stuff is rather expensive, but it's just going to take a little bit of time in order to get there. One last thing I'm going to show you is this hammer in my hand. It is here. It has nine attack damage. Uh, it's rather slow to attack um, and a slow harvest speed, etc. But if you right click on an undamaged turret, you'll disassemble it completely. So if you don't like this turret anymore, you just want the parts back. You just right click on the head of it and you get all the bits and pieces sprawled all over the ground. <laughs> And there you have it, another bit by bit. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, stop by on Twitch or visit our Mischief of Mice 2 YouTube channel where we upload our videos from Twitch, which we stream on regularly. Till next time, folks, I'll see ya.